Welcome back. Next, we'll take a deeper look at the if statement. So the if statement will always first perform a check to see whether your condition is true or false. So in the most basic form here, we're simply passing the true or false directly. And you see we get differing results whether we have true or false in here. So your first part um, after your if statement should always return true or false. And then following that will just be whatever expressions you want to execute. So if we run this, we're defining A beforehand and B beforehand as 10 and 20. And then we're saying here, if true, we want to um, increase A by one. And we see that happens because it's true, increases it by one, so 10 goes to 11. And then when, if here is false, we don't get this execution happening. So B remains as 20, didn't increase by one, okay? So we can evaluate many expressions after our condition it doesn't have to just be one. So let's take a look at that. So in this example here, we're setting X to be 10, first of all. And then our condition here is if our current time is greater than 12. So if we just check my system time out in front to start with, we'll get a sense of if that's true or false. So right now my system time is 1542, which is greater than 12. So this should be returning true here. So then the first um, following statement is going to do some printing out, just saying evaluating within the if. Then we're gonna increment X by one, set this new variable Y to be 10, and then we're gonna printing out that we're complete here. And then we're just saying, the y variable here we're not actually doing anything to it in the last um statement here so let's see what happens when we run this so we get we know it's true because we check that up here and then we see it's it's run this part um has it increased x by one we've i put it x outside it down here and we see yeah it's increased from 10 to 11. Um, and no we're not getting y i put here if you run this without anything down the bottom you'll see we're only getting the standard out statements printed. Um, but these values here at the end, they're not getting printed out. And that's because this is an if statement. It's not a function um, with a lambda. It's just um, its own if statement. So you might've thought this here would get returned. That won't happen. Um, so what about if we did want to return something from within the if statement? Um, you might think we could add our force return in that we've seen before. So for example here, if I want to force return early um, at this step here, so after I do my check, um, then I'm going to print my statement and then I want to return early here. And we end up getting the printed statement, the only, only the first one printed out, and then we get an evaluation error of NYI, which we know means not yet implemented. So it's saying, okay, we think this makes sense, but this doesn't work yet. And the reason why it doesn't work is because we haven't got this within a function. So this early return functionality only exists within our function or our lambda. So let's wrap this entire if statement within a lambda. So you see I've put my curly brackets out in front at the end and then also just not passing any parameters here, just leaving that blank and then I'm going to run it at the end here um, by passing it empty brackets. So apart from that it's all the same and if we run this what happens you'll see that we're returning early here. Remember 10 went to 11 but here 10 remains as 10 because nothing after here is actually happening. And that's why we don't get the complete statement printed out either. Okay, so typically when do we actually use this in, in real life? Um, so a really common use is say at the beginning of your script or the beginning of your function, you would check your incoming parameters to see are they of the right type or format required for the remainder of the function. So that's a very common application. Um, so for example, your function might require that you're doing a lookup on some symbols, for example, within a list, um, but the user could pass a string. So you want to check with an if statement right at the beginning saying, hey, is this user passing um, a symbol? If they're not, um, tell them to pass a symbol or do something else. So you have a few different options. Um, you could write a message to standard error and then exit the process early. You could write to standard error and then throw an error within the function. And then you could write to standard out and assign the value to a predetermined default. So we'll show a variety of these examples here. So for example, I've got a variable of symbol type and I'm saying um, here, 
I want to make sure my type is of the right type. So if we double check what 19H is, it's a type time. So let's run type on A. We know that's 11H, which is a symbol. So if we ran this bit here, we would say that was false. Um, <clears throat> so if you want to, if your statement is returning a false, but you actually want to execute, you can just flip that to be true using the not keyword. So that will just change, um, so do not on 0101B, it will just change any of the zeros to ones and any of the ones to zeros. So that can be really handy when you're doing conditions here, which return a zero B. So I'm saying, if my variable is not a symbol, then I want to do standard error. And then I'm also gonna do standard out here and pass back another message um, joining on the, the time. And then I'm also assigning var one to be T, which is system time. So if I run this, you'll see I get my error pr printed out we're saying, telling the user as well with the standard out that um, it needs to be defaulted to the current time. And then we're overriding var1, basically. So that's covering us in case this function is called with something incompatible. Now we could also um, exit the process early. So if we had commented this line in instead, that would, um, that would actually shut down this process. So I'm not going to run that. Um, and we could also do signaling instead. So if we run this, we see we get our um, a message as part of the error rather than as a standard output. OK, so those are a diff few different ways you can handle it. So depending on your application, um, you may decide, I want, no, I want to exit it. It's too dangerous if we run this with the wrong type or you want to set it to some default. Um, it will completely depend on the use case that you have. So why exit early? So one reason can be down to um, maybe performance implications with mathematical operations. So for example, here I've got two functions, f and f2, and they're performing a number of different calculations. So we're doing multiplication, division, we're raising something to a power, and then we're multiplying it here. And they're the exact same function, except in f2, I've got an additional check here that's saying if all my input, so if all of the results of n here are zero, don't even bother executing the rest just return early with that result and we're just this bit here remember that's just making sure we're creating a list if we don't have one already so for example if i had one here it would make that a list um and if i had list one two three it's gonna not affect it it's gonna make, ensure it's a list um so that's just enlisting our list so we're going to run these two. We're going to run them um, with our backslash TS command. Remember, that's our timer command and it returns the time and space used for that execution. And we're going to just run it um, this many times. So 200,000 times just because we want to see some performance um, impact. And if we run that, um, we'll see that the first one without the if statement took almost three seconds because it went through and executed everything, even though all we passed it was a list of a thousand zeros. Um, and then in the second one, we passed the exact same list of a thousand zeros, but it would have jumped out at this part because it recognized that everything is zero. So it doesn't need to bother um, going through and wasting time on the rest. And then we're just proving here at the end, the outputs are identical, okay? Now you can have a go with this exercise here. So to find a variable or to be 100 and answer to be an empty string and then write an if statement to say, if your or value is greater than 85, you wanna increase it by 10 and then change the answer to be high. So have a go with that and I'll see you in our next video.